Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's forecast we'll be talking about Hurricane Lee. There's a lot of stuff happening with Hurricane Lee right now and it is about to be going off to the north potentially toward New England or Nova Scotia and it could bring some impacts including very heavy rainfall, very high wind speeds and as well as the threat for some flooding. I'll be giving you the latest breakdown on all the threats across the entire east coast of the United States and as well as into Nova Scotia but let's first to begin with what Hurricane Lee looks like on the infrared imagery today and we actually have a pretty interesting storm right now brewing obviously it is a category 3 hurricane at one point Hurricane Lee was a category 5 hurricane after a few days it weakened to a category 2 and it's been weakening overall but it is starting to re-strengthen just a little bit as it is entering a bit more of a favorable environment with a lot less wind shear as of right now the eye of this is located well off to the north of the Lesser Antilles it's still out to sea there's not really any land being impacted right now by Hurricane Lee, but it's about to take a turn off to the north over the next 48 hours, and once that happens, this will be going off toward areas like New England and Nova Scotia, and those areas very well could be impacted. Notice the eye that's forming right now as of this afternoon. We do have an eye that's now developing, and that is just kind of giving you the idea that this is re-intensifying right now. It's about, it's just over a Category 3 level, so we're at 115 mile per hour wind speeds. This could get to a Category 4 hurricane briefly, and then after that, it's expected to weaken again, but again, a lot of convection around this. It is a pretty healthy looking storm not a whole lot of shear and there's not a whole lot of dry air so overall the intensification is expected here over the next 24 to 48 hours so the national hurricane center and their latest outlook has a pretty large cone of uncertainty but let's first begin with the next couple of days through wednesday into thursday this is expected to stay as a major hurricane all the way through late wednesday afternoon it's likely to weaken back down to a category two hurricane by thursday morning so good news it's going to start to go downhill as it moves off to the north by late to, uh, Thursday, this will continue to move off to the north. There is still a chance that Bermuda still sees some tropical storm impacts, maybe even some hurricane impacts, depending on where the eye of this storm goes in this very large cone of uncertainty. Once we go on to Friday, this is expected to weaken down to a Category 1 hurricane. So again, great news overall as this continues to move off to the north. However, it's not the best of news because where this goes is still a big deal because that wind field will actually be stretching out as it moves off to the north. So if the eye of the storm even stays this far away from New England, we will still see wind gusts on the east coast of New England as high as 70 to 80 miles per hour, which is obviously very concerning because one, it's going to bring an increased wind speed to the coastline, so there could even be a little bit of tree damage and power lines down, but that'll also increase the threat for some storm surge, which is obviously another large concern, especially if you're back near Nova Scotia, but that should stay down to a minimum. We'll talk about more than that later in this forecast, but as it moves off to the north, notice this very large cone of uncertainty that we have. It stretches from New England all the way back through Nova Scotia and this is the area that we could see a landfall in so if you're anywhere in New England you still have to be alert about this because there is still a chance that this makes a landfall near the southeast part of New England near Cape Cod or southeast Massachusetts possibly Rhode Island those areas have to be on alert for a direct landfall but even if you're anywhere in New England still watch this very closely now if you're back down through the coastline from New Jersey and New York back through Florida there is no expected landfall here and there's really not going to be a whole lot of impacts inland but if you're right along the coastline higher wave heights are very likely we've seen wave heights as high as eight to ten feet already getting close to areas like florida so there are some very high waves coming out of this in addition to that rip currents will be extremely dangerous it's really not recommended that you go into the water because rip currents are just so dangerous and if you get pulled out into the ocean by a rip current it could very well be life-threatening if there's a red flag up at the beach that likely means that you should not be going into the water it's a high hazard in those areas all right let's talk a little bit about the wave heights now as of right now near the eye of where Hurricane Lee is. This is producing waves as high as 50 feet. That is super high, by the way. Uh, that will not be impacting the United States, but what will be impacting the United States, especially near the coastline, are wave heights between 8 to 12 feet in some areas, especially back up near the Mid-Atlantic region and back into the New England area. We could be talking about wave heights once this gets closer to landfall, even near Boston, upwards of 20 feet. So what this essentially means is that we're going to be talking about really dangerous waves, even just off the coast or near the beaches, which could also make it very dangerous if you're anywhere near water in addition to that there could even be some storm surge since we will have some strong winds coming out of the east we'll be watching that development very closely though as we get closer because again we don't have an official storm surge forecast yet from the national hurricane center
before i show you the most likely area where hurricane lee will make landfall in parts of the northeast or nova scotia i do want to talk a little bit more about the water temperatures because this is a very interesting development here over the past few days now where lee is right now the water temperatures are approximately 29 degrees celsius which is well over 80 degrees that's plenty warm for hurricanes now once this moves off to the north we actually have a patch of cooler water temperatures that is just off to the north of this now this you might think is very normal since we're so far off to the north but the reason why it's a little bit cooler like 27 degrees celsius for example it's even a little bit cooler in some spots is because of what we've seen over the past few weeks with a dahlia that's moved through the atlantic ocean franklin those have actually cooled down the water temperatures because essentially what it does is rise colder water from below the surface of the, the seawater it actually goes up and that will start to filter in some cooler water temperatures so that's what's happening over there and it's kind of an interesting development because that could actually weaken this a little bit quicker as well from that category three stage it's at right now to a category two category one eventually maybe even a tropical storm once it makes landfall somewhere up here in the northeast but it still looks likely this will make landfall either as a low-end category one hurricane or perhaps a strong tropical storm now when we're talking about the overall computer models here we're going to show you a bunch of different ones but these are the spaghetti models and the most recent guidance here from various computer models have two different situations one of which is that it goes toward nova scotia this would still bring some impacts especially to maine as where we could definitely see some impacts there but we also have a couple of computer models that are starting to still show this going toward maybe cape cod massachusetts or even southern maine so obviously there's still some uncertainty that's what this basically means if we look at some of the ensembles as well this is another little run here there's only one computer model that's an outlier here that brings it toward like you know long island new york for example the rest of which are bringing this toward nova scotia or even perhaps maine so it looks very likely that this will make landfall either in nova scotia or perhaps in new england and if it made landfall in new england it would either be cape cod or maine that's my thinking on this at this point and once we look at more of the ensembles again notice there are still multiple computer models that show different things there's like a couple outlier models like this one that brings it toward new york city i don't think that's happening there's a couple other computer models that bring this toward cape cod and then again the majority of them are still bringing this either toward maine or nova scotia so as of right now basically what we can gather from this is that it's very likely that this will actually be going toward nova scotia it could still go toward new england though i would say it's about a 25 percent chance that there's a landfall in new england or in the northeast and then about a 75 percent chance that this makes landfall in nova scotia or elsewhere in canada that's my thinking as of right now again it is subject to change and this is all based really on what the national hurricane center has for us as of right now the track is more likely than not going to go toward nova scotia but there is still that low chance it does go toward new england regardless we are still talking about some impacts especially in new england here's the model guidance on the different intensities over the next several days by three days from now we'll be watching this being weakening down to a category three again this will get to a category four level briefly most likely if it doesn't it would be a strong category three hurricane for the next you know 24 hours once this gets closer to new england watch how quickly this drops off as it moves into cooler water temperatures we'll be talking about a decrease down to a category one and as well as a tropical storm so big difference there over the next several days so let's talk about two of the most reliable computer models when it comes to this sort of stuff and we're going to look at the european model first which is well within reason now of being accurate so we're only about 100 hours out from this making landfall somewhere in new england or as well as nova scotia there's still that slim chance it even goes out to sea but the european model does by fridays puts this just east of the carolinas southeast of new england by saturday into sunday that is when we'll start to see impact so as early as saturday morning that will be pretty close to new england if not near nova scotia and eventually as we go into sunday the european model has this making landfall just east of maine near nova scotia so that's where it's the most likely to see landfall as of right now is in that general facility and also on the gfs model showing a very similar instance here as we go into friday again it starts to weaken out as it moves off to the north still producing those some really high waves and as well as a lot of rainfall and then the gfs model actually makes us have a landfall as well near nova scotia pretty much in the same area as the gfs the only difference is it does wobble a little bit near new england so it kind of goes a little bit left and then it turns back to the right in terms of what we're looking at in a closer view you'll notice there will be heavy bands of rain on saturday for parts of new england again this is not set in stone it still has a lot of do with where this tracks out to be if it goes further east we probably won't see a whole lot of rain but maine for sure is definitely going to see some impacts out of this whether that's just higher waves or even some flooding rainfall that's definitely in play and then the gfs model another close perspective again heavy bands of rain here near massachusetts and then eventually a lot of heavy rain as well for maine so if it takes more of a track that goes toward maine maine would see more significant impacts if you're in anywhere else in new england like new hampshire vermont massachusetts you definitely still want to watch this pretty closely for that wind field i know i mentioned this earlier that this will be a pretty stretched out wind field this is by saturday afternoon on the, uh, the european model notice the wind speeds around 80 to 85 miles per hour that's the estimate 
So there definitely will be some high wins out of this without a doubt. Uh, but obviously the question is, how close is this to New England? The closer it is to New England, the worse it'll be for that wind field, and it'll include a lot more areas. The further away it is, it will not be nearly as concerning. And this is also the GFS model for a perspective. Again, it shows pretty much the same sort of thing for wind speeds. It would be the highest right along the coastline. So power outage is definitely possible. But again, there are still multiple days until we get here. So we'll keep you posted with the latest. But now New England is officially in that cone of uncertainty. So we are going to definitely still watch this very closely as it continues to move off to the west and eventually turns off to the north. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.